Hello, Tamika in Greensboro. It is Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. And with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses for your Prada OPR 180, color NAG 101, which is the blue tortoise in the 54 eye size. Let me take everything out of the original packaging that Prada sends to me. Your Italian leather Prada box. Your leather Prada case, your Prada cleaning cloth, and of course the star of the show. You've got a little Prada emblem on the inside, and of course this is the OPR 180 in color NAG 101. And as you can see, it is the mottled blue tortoise. It comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together while it's being shipped from Italy. It also comes with a card of authenticity. It has a serial number printed on each frame that you can register your product with Prada. And of course, this is the blue tortoise with the blue temples. So let me go ahead and begin. I'm gonna pop out your original demo lenses. And of course, you're gonna get all the manufacturer's original packaging, including the demo lenses, and one of which says Prada. I'm gonna put your frame into the tracing element of my edger and begin the cycle. The stylus is gonna pop up and it's gonna go around and trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left lens. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Prada frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipts have my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. But Tamika, you know you need prescription lenses. So that is the shape of your lens, only magnified. Let me minify it down onto the screen. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and enter the first component of your pupillary distance, which is 30 in your right eye. I'm going to tap that button and then this little minus symbol I'm going to hit repeatedly until we end up with 30. And we are there. I'm going to go ahead and, oops, let's go ahead and magnify everything back to the size that I can work on. Let me take your lenses. I'm going to come down here to my Marco 101 lensometer, spin the power drum to 100. Actually, let's go ahead and turn everything on. Let me get it centered. We are good there. Your right eye reads Plano minus 175 at 100. Plano minus 175. And in fact, let me go ahead and mark this for you. And you're going to get the original sleeves. That makes this one the left. Let's mark this one R for right, L for left. I had a 50-50 chance of getting it right. So Plano minus 175 at 100. Plano, which is zero, minus 175 at 100. Take your lens out of the protective sleeves. It actually comes with a little laminate on the front of the lens to protect the lens from anything that may rub against it during shipping. And of course, I will put that on there when I ship to you. Put that back on the packet for now. I'm gonna put your lens in my Marco 101 lensometer. Rotate until the sphere power comes in clearly. Check your astigmatism correction. Make sure everything's lined up perfectly. Now I'm gonna put three dots on your lenses. And I'm gonna mark this one R for right. Let's do the same thing now for the left lens. Your left lens reads minus one and a quarter, minus 150 at 85. Minus one and a quarter, minus 150 at 85. I'm gonna turn that fine tune knob to 85. Take the lens out of the protective sleeve. Pull the laminate off. Put that on the packet for now. Let's see, I put the power drum at minus one and a quarter. Put the lens in, rotate until the sphere power comes in clearly. Find the optical center of your lens. Check your astigmatism correction, which I'll explain in just a moment. Put three dots on the lenses, uno, dos, and three. And we're gonna mark this one L for not right, which is just like me, I ain't right either. But what are you gonna do? There's no cure for that. So I'm gonna take your right lens, put it onto the platform. Now this is a block. I like to call them Jenny from the block, but I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. So I need a double-sided piece of sticker to do that, of which I've got a couple hanging above my head. Put the sticker on the first block, place that on the platform, put the sticker on the second block. Now on the back of this block is a little silver button. That is a magnet. It's gonna do its job twice today. The first time, well, let me pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. The magnet is gonna be matched up with the one inside this arm. So I hold it in place. Now, 
The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. There's three dots that I put on there with the one in the center being the optical center that's going to sit, sit directly in front of your pupil. That goes in that little orange graph there. And the other two dots I put on there tell me that it's lined up perfectly and that your lens, because your lens has to be oriented in there just perfectly with those three dots on a horizontal plane. If it gets off kilter at all, you're just not going to see as well. So that is lined up perfectly. Hit that little button and now the arm is going to drop down and place the block onto your right lens. Let's do the same thing now for the unright lens. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Get everything lined up where it's supposed to be. You can see the black dots there, those three black dots. I'm going to drop this one down and that in that middle of the crosshairs both vertically and horizontally goes that one and then line up these other two dots so that they're on there perfectly oh you know what the pupillary distance for your right eye left eye I'm sorry is 30.5 this mirrored the right lens which is 30 so I'm gonna hit the magnify the I'm sorry the plus button until we're at 30.5 which means I'm gonna have to move everything this way just a little bit and there we are back to the optical center hit that button and the block is going to be placed onto the left lens now this is the edger this is what costs forty thousand dollars it weighs 200 pounds i recommend everyone go out and buy their own put it on your kitchen counter then you can cut your own lenses at home you won't need me anymore the actual cutting wheel is in here on the inside on the far right it's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material this wheel in the center with that channel that little valley that's what's going to place the bevel onto the lens so it'll stay inside the bevel of the frame so let me go ahead and take your right lens the magnet is going to do its job twice now the second time i should say it's going to hold it in place into the chuck or as i like to call it the charles because i don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck where's my stylus here it is without the stylus could i do that this actually costs thirty nine thousand dollars this only costs one thousand dollars but it makes a great team but that is the shape of your lens that's going to be cut these are polycarbonate lenses if it were plastic or high index or trivex i would choose that material but these are polycarbonate lenses i am not going to put a polish on the lens i'm not going to put a bevel on the front surface the convex surface of the lens i'm only going to put a safety bevel on the rear surface the concave surface of the lens and that concludes your vocabulary lesson of the day i'm going to hit the green arrow which is start in every language the door closes the clamp shuts and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses making sure it's going to do it twice making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame you can see as it's measuring that and then the old carpenter saying measure twice cut once it's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing or essentially the best cosmetic look possible now if you notice there's water flickering in the background or light flickering that is water running it's only there to catch the optical sawdust that will fly off your lens as it begins cutting polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic and high index plastic cut wet you can hear your lens as it begins grinding now your lenses are made out of polycarbonate polycarbonate is 40 percent thinner and lighter than regular plastic it is virtually unbreakable your lenses are bulletproof of the 22 caliber and have both uva and uvb protection built into the lens we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes unlike the lotions creams and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct intense exposure to the sun which like you're doing this week you told me you bought these right before going on vacation to the beach so this is permanent sunscreen that will never need to be reapplied now the other nice thing about your lenses the polycarbonate these are Essilor brand lenses Essilor calls polycarbonate air wear because they feel they are as light as air these are the transition 7 signature 7 series gray lenses with Crizol Alizé and as you can see these are the transitions gray signature 7 lenses with the Crizol Alizé and of course it has its own unique UV protection and the SPF formula of 25 now the nice thing about your lenses and i'll demonstrate the transitions later you have an anti-glare feature that was the only upgrade that you well you your lenses are free with the purchase of this frame hence the website 
but you paid the $50 upgrade to the transition and the extra $40 for the anti-glare. The anti-glare coating is three features in one. It eliminates glare when driving at night, but particularly driving at night in the rain. But from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights, and the such. The second feature, it's a reflection-free lens. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. They're looking at just your eyes, so it makes for much better eye contact. It also, the reason why a lot of people get it, is if you take a selfie or someone takes a picture with a flash, you don't see the flash lit up in the lens like you do on this lens on the right that does not have the anti-glare coating. Now the third feature comes with the most premium scratch coating possible. The machine that applies the anti-glare coating costs well over a million dollars. It, uh, it takes over 24 hours to vaporize seven different layers onto your lens because of the time and the expense. That's why they put the hardest scratch coating. Now I'm gonna open this door with my mind. Did you like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I can, it just takes me a couple hours and I have to stare at the ice, but I can melt it. I can, don't you believe me? Okay, I just wanna run my thumbnail along the back edge to make sure all the optical sawdust is removed. I'm gonna tuck the lens in at the outside corner and then using my thumbs, I press down at the nose and it doesn't wanna go yet and I'm not gonna force it. So I'm gonna take that back out. I'm gonna take it down a 10th of a millimeter. Now to all my American friends who have no clue what a millimeter is, it is the distance between my thumbnails. I'm gonna take one tenth of that distance off going around the circumference of the lens until it fits in there easily. I don't wanna force the lens into the frame. That would cause your frame to stretch or what we in the business call roll. If you can imagine your frame is like a gutter, if the lens were in there too tight, it would force the bottom of the frame to roll outwards. It would shorten the life of the frame and give you a terrible cosmetic look. But because I am a perfectionist and I cut every pair of lenses that get shipped worldwide, I'm gonna make sure they fit just perfectly. Because years from now, I can mail you lenses for this frame. I don't need it again. My computer will memorize this shape and I can send them right to your home. And I just wanna make sure they're the right size and they're not forced in there so we don't have any issues. Now, if you have noticed, there is water running now that's to wash away any optical debris. But polycarbonate grinds dry with no water on it. It's only for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle as it's putting the safety bevel onto the rear, the concave surface of the lens. I will take the lens out. Help me open the door, Tamika. Wow, you're good. Your first day on the job, you opened it with your mind. I have taught you well, young Jedi. Now, everyone out there who believes in telekinesis, raise my hand. Wait, what's, what? Wow, it must really work. Somebody raised my hand. Okay, let me use my thumbnail to clear that away with the water didn't. I'm gonna tuck the lens in at the outside corner using my thumbs, press down. Now it snaps in easily. And I didn't have to force it in. I'm gonna take the left lens, put it into the chuck. Hit it over to L and let's go ahead and hit the start button. Again, the door closes, the clamp shuts, and then the lens is gonna be traced by two white styluses, making sure that the left lens is large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's tracing, as it's going around. And of course, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel. So you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. And of course, in this frame, you have no edge thickness whatsoever. It's a great cosmetic look there. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna take the block off. This is no longer needed. Let's pull that sticker off. You can keep that little red dot that's on there. In fact, let me darken that so you can see that at home. Again, that is your optical center. Come on, pan right. Do I need another pen? Where's a better pen? Let me grab your prescription and come down here. I just want to darken the dot that's on the lens. And if you miss any of that, let me recap. Oh, I know that's bad, but you'll be telling it tomorrow. You'll be at work telling that joke tomorrow. So I'm gonna put your lens in my dusty Marco 101 lensometer. This is a good time for you to see all the dust that's on top. I'm gonna to spin the axis wheel back to 100. I'm gonna read the power and we are getting zero which is Plano, you are not nearsighted or farsighted. You have no power correction needed. Your right eye component is completely astigmatic. 
This first number magnifies or in your left eye case minifies. That's why there's a minus sign. It will minify to the correct size. But the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called diopter, D-I-O-P-T-E-R, and it starts at zero, which is Plano, and goes up from there in quarter increments, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, one, one and a quarter, 150, 175, and so on. So you need zero magnification or minification, but you need seven steps of correction for your astigmatism. Now there is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. It is not a disease, it is not an affliction. Think of it as the fine-tuned knob. That's, astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F. If it were a fine-tuned knob, we're gonna turn that knob to 100. A straight line is zero to 180, with 90 being in the center. We're gonna start at zero and we're gonna turn the knob past 90 to 100. Now, your left eye needs five steps of minification for your farsightedness. You are nearsighted in your left eye. You can actually see up close great, but whatever you can't get your hands on, you're gonna need five steps of minification to make everything the correct size. Now, you need another six steps for your astigmatism correction, and we're gonna turn that fine-tuned knob of your astigmatism to 85. So again, starting at zero, we're gonna almost make it to 90, but we're gonna stop right there. Now, these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180 and really doesn't mean anything. These first numbers may not mean anything to you, but they mean something to me. So, I'm going to check your astigmatism correction, and we're going to find out we're going to be at minus 175. One tick mark away from 2. So, remember high school algebra where you add two like signs together? Don't worry, I've forgotten high school algebra too, Tamika. Let's use today's terms. If someone had borrowed a dollar twenty-five and then they borrowed another dollar fifty, they're going to owe you two dollars and seventy-five cents. And even though we're at minus one seventy-five here, our final value for your left eye would be two seventy-five. So let's go ahead and take your left lens out. Where's my customized paper towel? Dry everything off, wash away any optical debris. My recycling bag is tipped over. It's time to take out the recycling. Yes, I drink a lot of water and eat salads. I'm trying to be healthy. The wife's making me. That's right, I'm talking about you, honey. She won't let me eat fatty cheeseburgers anymore. She wants me to live a long time and take care of her. What's up with that? You know, if I died early, she could get all my money. All right, so let me take, uh, tuck the left lens in at the outside corner. Tuck everything that lens in. Let me come down here and get my block. You know, it's embarrassing. If I knew people were coming over, I would have cleaned up a little bit better. Let me move this out of the way. <laughs> okay, sorry. Awkward. Let me darken that dot. And if you missed anything about my recycling, let me recap. <laughs> you fell for it again. All right, I'm going to turn the axis wheel to 85. That is the fine tune knob. Put your left lens in over that red dot, your optical center. And I'm getting minus one and a quarter. Let me check your astigmatism correction. And what do you know? We're at 275, one tick mark away from three. So I couldn't have made that any better myself. Wait, I did make these. So your pupillary distance is 30 in your right eye, 30.5 in your left for a total of 60.5. I'm going to flip these over. I'm going to take my PD stick out of my pocket. I'm going to place the zero on your right lens against my thumb. And when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 0 0.5. So that is made correctly too. Now, this is the time in every video that I explain when I ship these to you. And of course, free shipping anywhere in the United States. But Tamika, when you get these in the mail, there's a very small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is gonna sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I am no exception. I'm part of that 80%, but I'm gonna get these in, but because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But for now, I'm gonna get these in standard alignment, also known as the three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm gonna take off my Gucci 2248 color 4VD and I'm gonna place them on the counter when I press down they wobble but on the table but they sit level on me let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing yo flip over your Pradas press down there is no wobble close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and they do and they're not askew or anything check the tension on each spring hinge that is uniform as well 
So Tamika, this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them, which means I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet protection over here in the corner in my little transitions box. And as you can see, it will, I'll turn it on and it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken when they're exposed to UV. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Tamika, this is important. Pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun and they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks. Now, after that, they'll reach their final hue and they'll work for years with maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield has UV inhibitors that protect your dashboard from cracking from sitting in the sun all day and that's why they won't turn dark in a car. Now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle they will darken. Now they're also temperature sensitive meaning they will get darker when it's 85 degrees and below than it will when it's 95 degrees and above. I remind everyone when it's triple digits you're miserable, they're miserable, nobody likes to work 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. So that is that. That's what your lenses look like the first time they've been activated. Don't worry, Tamika, they're going to darken. Come on, remember, we talked about this. Don't you remember? But that's that. If anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Like Tamika did, she wanted this frame. I did not have it on the website yet, but I told her I'd be more than happy to order, for, order it for her. She'd been looking for it everywhere. So she did. She was willing to wait a week to, to two. Was it ten days that it took for these to come in from Italy? But... I hope, Tamika, I hope you did. I hope it was worth the wait, and I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut your prescription lenses with Transition 7 Gray Lenses and Crizola Alize Anti-Glare for your Prada VPR 180, color 54, I mean size 54, the color NAG 101, which again is the blue tortoise. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.